finally happening. 2022, we're finally getting drywall in the Serpentarium. We're gonna make this place beautiful. We're gonna have custom built enclosures in the back. He's amazing, beautiful, gold, King Cobra. Out of all of them. Right after that would be Black Mamba. Beautiful albino monocle cobra. Whoa, cranky. And you can just see, whoo, how fat, fat as mud. Her scales are spread apart. She's got eggs all up inside this area. Guys, it's finally happening. 2022, we're finally getting drywall in the Serpentarium. We're gonna make this place beautiful. Murals everywhere, reptiles painted up top. We're gonna have custom built enclosures in the back, big custom black PVC enclosures. We're gonna have a 14 foot deep enclosure for the King Cobra that's 10 feet wide and eight feet tall with lots of climbing space for my King Cobras to be happy. One for Justina, one for Kevin. We're gonna do a big custom black mob enclosure. The floors are gonna get epoxied. This place is gonna look completely different. And this is the first day stepping forward into the future, making all the big changes to make this Serpentarium official. An official place, a destination for you guys to come visit and experience the coolest reptiles on the planet, venomous reptiles. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna move all these enclosures with my good friend Justin who helps me film to the center of the room so the drywall guys can come in and start drywalling all of these walls and then my good buddy's gonna come out here and start working on a mural. So you guys are gonna be able to see him too. We're gonna film him painting this whole place. It's gonna be insane. He's gonna come and do it in just a couple days. So enjoy the speed run of me running around moving all these venomous reptiles in boxes. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, guys, we did it. This whole entire room, just about everything has been taken away from the walls. So these guys can come in and put up drywall all the way to the roof, just like they did over there. We're gonna have awesome murals all over the place. This tank, disgusting. Filter broke down for like the fourth time. Just gonna get rid of the tank, not doing that anymore. <laughs> I'm just gonna do snakes in here. And then we're gonna have all the crocs and all the cool stuff outside too. Ooh, what's going on? So cool. Kevin. That walk-in King Cobra enclosure is coming soon, buddy. Just kidding, he's right there. Got him pranked. All right, my beautiful, wonderful, pleasant viewers out there. I'm gonna sing to you because it's what I want to do. Ooh, that rhyme was smooth. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You don't even know what I, I can't. I'm, wait until I get my studio set up to start start spitting those, those hard bars and, and singing to you guys and making you guys melt like butter. Anyways, we got some enclosure cleaning, dude. In the months of all this, the months, in the in the midst or whatever, <clears throat> in the act of moving all these enclosures, I still have to take care of my babies, including Kevin. And he made doo-doo all over his glass. Kevin's a 15-foot Malaysian King Cobra, and uh, he needs to get clean, so I still have to do that, even though well, there's a bunch of enclosures that have to move, and, and I, I got guests coming tomorrow to get a tour and check out everything. Whew, I still gotta clean some poo poo, you know? It's not just me wiping my own bum around here. I gotta take care of this guy too. Oh, Spider-Man reflexes. And you're about to see what the, those Spider-Man reflexes are all about, guys. I'm like, you even see me shoot those webs. Anyways, let's get this done. We gotta take care of this guy. I've done so much today. We filmed out Wild Florida. We had a great time. And then we took care of the old crocodilians, clean all their tubs, deep clean, took care of all the animals, move around for the cold. Just finished moving around all these enclosures, getting ready for the drywall. 
I'm super happy. I, I, I love being tired after doing a lot of doing a lot of things for my facility and getting things moving. I got held up, as you guys know, when I first moved to this property. The local community was very scared. There was rumors being spread around me that I was that I was going to bring in the grizzly bears and do a circus or whatever, and it's not the truth. This is a private facility for conservation purposes, and I really just want to have really cool private tours where people get to experience these animals up close and personal. Obviously, from safety parameters with a king cobra, but definitely get the experience to get close to these animals, learn about these animals, and change your mind about these animals if you have fear for venomous reptiles or crocodiles or maybe even birds. And then you fly but gold and you fall in love with birds. Look at Kevin, he's amazing, beautiful, gold, king cobra. How can you not think this animal is incredible, like a crocodile, tiger, bull shark? Like, he's such a cool animal. Ooh, you might be a little upset. I'm not gonna put him in a bucket today. I want him to stretch, to be nice and comfy. So I'm gonna put him actually right here and let him stretch himself. And I'm gonna let him watch me as I clean this enclosure because I really want him to get some exercise. Very soon he's gonna have that 14 foot deep enclosure, 10 feet wide, eight feet tall. Oh my goodness, have you ever seen such a thing? Oh, I don't think so. Kevin, you hear that? You can't cause you don't have ears, buddy, but it's okay. It's okay, I love you. I know you can. You, re you read lips. Gotta get this glass. Oh, almost dropped that. That would've been bad. All right, so I'm gonna get his enclosure clean. He had a python not long ago on the feeding episode, and he just went all over the place. And Justina ate as well, so these guys need to get clean. I'm not worried about Kevin pursuing me, because Kevin really has no reason to pursue me. Justina might have to worry about, but at the end of the day, these snakes want nothing to do with me, so I'm not worried about Kevin right now. I see him in my peripheral vision. I'm not turning my back to him. Making sure he's not gonna mess around with me. But he is a good king cobra. All right, so what I want to do is get all this dookie out. Because it's a, it's a mess. The thing about these king cobras is when you're keeping them in enclosures like this, these vision cages are awesome. They do have good ventilation in the back, but a king cobra, it's, a, it's the world's longest venomous snake. They eat other snakes. They eat lots of protein, pythons. They're breaking down something like a seven foot, eight foot Burmese python, digesting it, pooping it all over the place. And that's high ammonia. It's not good for the snake when it's in a small enclosure and the ventilation isn't you know, really good. It's not like a full time mesh top. It's just a couple vents here and there. So you don't want this animal to asphyxiate or uh, have any issues breathing that in because I, I can't even handle breathing in it. It's disgusting. So I don't want Kevin to breathe it in. So I want to make sure this gets clean. I'm not going to waste any time. And very soon he's going to have a giant enclosure with really good ventilation. What are you doing? You looking at Justin? <laughs> Kevin, you are a beautiful boy. And then eventually I'm going to get Kevin a girlfriend. I want to get a nice, beautiful Malaysian female. That's what I've been waiting for. Justina is an Indonesian. I want to breed her to another Indonesian. And I also like to get some other localities if I can, because not just am I going to do these big, beautiful enclosures, I might end up doing 16 foot long enclosures that are like, excuse me, uh, about four feet tall, 16 feet long. So not walk-ins, but still big, beautiful enclosures long enough for a King Cobra. So I'm very excited. At least Kevin and Justina, my original King Cobras, are going to have massive enclosures. And then everything else is going to have a huge enclosure too, even Justina. Everyone's getting massive upgrades. It's awesome. But what's really awesome is all this poop. Screw you! That's a king cobra right there. Look at that beautiful creature. Longest venomous snake on the planet. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Here on ba 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 Challenge Wild World. You know it's really good to let him stretch out like this, especially since he's. Not in a very big enclosure, so every time I get a chance to take him out and clean, I like to, ooh, you're a little upset today. I like to let him stretch, let him move around, because he's not always able to do that, you know? I, I'm very busy trying to take care of a whole collection, run a business, and it's gonna be nice to actually have an enclosure for every single snake, where even if I don't have time to handle them and take them out of the enclosure and let them stretch, they have a big enough enclosure where they're already stretching and they have enrichment, like obstacles to climb and, and vines and stuff like that. It's just very exciting. I love these snakes. This is the most intelligent snake on the planet. King cobras are truly the smartest snake out of all of them. Right after that would be black mamba. Black mambas have to be smartest right after king cobras. They're so intelligent. I know him, he knows me. I know he did a little mock charge. He can definitely bite me. He can definitely deliver a dose. But at the same time, I respect this snake and I know just where to be at the right time. He is such a beautiful animal. Look at those gold chevrons going down his body, those bands. And look, he starts to bow his head down, investigate, flick his tongue, 
He's starting to calm down. He's much more calmer demeanor when it comes to interactions than Justina, my female King Cobra. What a beast. All right, we're good to go. Enclosure's nice and clean, fresh water. Kevin can finally go back into his enclosure for the night. It's getting a little bit late, so we were just making sure, ooh, we were just making sure that Kevin was well taken care of before I move on with all these projects. I'm gonna be so busy the next couple days, so I want all the animals to be well taken care of for right now. He's real upset, he's cranky, he's cracking his mouth at me and showing me his fangs. I'm just redirecting him right now so he realizes that I'm not worth going after. So we're gonna put him inside this enclosure now, and I'll see you guys when the carpenters are here and they're starting to the drywall. Ooh, Kevin, you're getting so big. What do you do with your tail, Kevin? Woo! Yeah. Guys, I'm just wrapping up with cleaning this enclosure. Late night. And look at this beautiful albino monocle cobra. Whoa! Cranky, cranky, cranky. Beautiful albino monocle cobra. Shedding right now. You see all the skin stuck right there. Look at this. So you can get him to focus right here. Look how beautiful the snake is. About to get out of that old skin. Ooh, get out of that old skin. It's okay. Just focusing on the handle of the snake hook. They focus on movement. That's the thing about cobras. Vipers focus on heat. Cobras focus on movement. They don't have heat pits. Ooh, they don't have heat pits like a viper. And when this snake comes out of that shed, it's gonna be so beautiful. Right now, it's like a muddy color. Beautiful albino monocled cobra, Nyakuthia. So cool. Beautiful. Look at that. See the eye cap? They do shed a cap off of their eye. So they're temporarily blind when they shed. They get cloudy, milky secretion between the old skin and the new. Ooh, doesn't like the snake hook. It's okay. It's okay, relax. All right, now we're gonna use that to our advantage. Close the enclosure. Lock that. And secure. What is going on, beautiful people? It's another beautiful day here in South Florida. I thought I'd give you guys a little update on what's going on. Let's go inside the Serpentarium and check it out. So, what we got going on right now, let me get this unlocked real quick. What we got going on right now is we have all the framing done for the Serpentarium. And then Wednesday, ignore the tank, we're getting rid of it. There's nothing in there. We're getting all the drywall taken care of. The utility room right here, we got it framed out so you don't have to look at the sink and the power and whatnot and the AC. We got it all framed out. We're gonna keep our industrial fan to suck out any of that nasty air when snakes go to the bathroom or maybe they don't eat their rats and stinks in here so it can suck out all the nasty air, but it's completely framed out. So we got all of our framing done, the very tips of those metal frames right there, that framing, that's where the drywall is going to end. And then there's going to be a ceiling, a black ceiling that's going to connect to the AC. So it's going to be a beautiful ceiling. Sorry, I look like a mess right now. I'm just running around. I'm going to take my friend to the airport in a second, but check this out. I separated Big Bertha, my gorgeous monocled cobra that I've had for years now, because it turns out Sunshine is a boy and he definitely got her grabbing and she's about to bust with eggs. Look at this. We're just gonna, whoop, I can already hear her. We're gonna put her right inside this tofu right now and separate her out of this box so we can get the albino male into this box temporarily. Hello. And you can already, ooh, ooh, you can already see, ooh, you can already see that she's actually blue in the eye. She's very opaque in the eyes. She's about to shed her skin. So she is thick right now. She has not been eating. She is fat with eggs right now. I'm gonna gently see if I can get her out real gentle. And you can just see whoo, how fat, fat as mud. Look how fat the last third of her body is. Her scales are spread apart. She's got eggs all up inside this area. She'll probably have anywhere from 10, 15 eggs. And it'll take about two months for these guys to hatch out. So this is super exciting. I love hatching out cobras. But notice her eyes are opaque right now. Whoop. Which means that right after the whoop, right after that shed, be real gentle with her. Let's just get her right in there. I don't want her to stress out. So that means that she's gonna shed, and right after she sheds that skin, she should lay all those eggs. So let's just close this container up. Such a beautiful snake. Nyakuthia, the monocled cobra, super potent drop for drop. 
Obviously, this snake is very dangerous, but I've known this snake for such a long time. Nobody should handle snakes in that kind of manner unless you got serious training experience. This cobra drop for drop is more potent than a king cobra. It's insane because this is a true cobra. So anyways, we're gonna just keep her separate for a second. We're gonna put her back inside her enclosure. Let's get out the albino male monocled cobra. Sunshine, we'll put him inside this box for now just because we don't want the risk of her laying her eggs and potentially the boyfriend eating the eggs because these snakes are known to eat eggs out in the wild. So let's move Big Bertha. Right over here. She's extra big now. It's so cool. I can't wait to hatch out some baby cobras. I love baby cobras. It's so cool seeing them come out of the egg. So we'll put it right there, nice and gentle. Look at him. He's the father. He's the father. Wasn't really sure uh, if this was a female or a male at first. Wasn't really paying attention, honestly. As I looked at that tail the other day, I was like, that tail looks real thick. He's packing heat. So he's definitely, whew, he's definitely responsible for getting her gravid. Gravid is the term used for a pregnant reptile, one that's gonna lay eggs. Woo hoo hoo, hello beautiful boy. He puts up so nicely. So I believe he's like a sunset monocled cobra, which is basically like a fancy albino monocled cobra. So these babies should either be het for albino with some albino or just het for albino. So we'll see what happens in the next two months or so. It takes around 55 days for these guys to hatch out for them to develop in the egg. You gonna come out? The snake has always been very defensive, whereas Big Bertha is a lot of hiss and whatnot, but she's honestly a very laid back, but, ooh, 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 very laid back snake. So anyways, Big Bertha, I've had the longest out of my, all my animals. So she's definitely one of my favorites. And this beautiful snake was a gift from a friend who retired from keeping venomous reptiles. So it's cool that we can continue the bloodline and have some baby monocled cobras down the road. So let's just get him into the box so we don't stress him out. Let's get everyone moved. You're all over the place. His kids are gonna have such enthusiasm. Nice little water dish in there, fresh paper towel. We're just gonna leave him in there until those eggs hatch. Well, I also do have glass being made for some of my extra vision cages. So he'll probably get an enclosure by tomorrow. So he doesn't be in this box too long. Along with that beautiful spinning cover that I know you guys love. Ooh, it's a black neck spinning cover, but it's got a red neck. So it's a red neck spinning cover. Skew! Can I get a skew? Skew! Very good, I like that, I like that. All right, come on over here. Let's see. Let's get Big Bertha ready to go back in her enclosure. So we have the typical hide. We're gonna put that in the corner. And we have sphagnum moss. Now, usually I would take a lid and put it on top of this to keep the humidity for that sphagnum moss and have a little hole at the top so she can go in there and feel comfortable. I don't have a good lid. I don't have anything good to drill a hole right now, so I'm just going to go real basic and throw this hide right on top of that to keep that moss nice and humid. She can go right in there, lay her eggs if she likes, which is going to be the best spot in this enclosure. It's nice and humid for her right there in that moss. So I'll keep checking that box every day, seeing if she uh, laid those eggs. Really just pay attention to her body weight. The second she looks thin, I'm gonna pull those eggs out. But you can see, look at this, look how thick she is. You can see right now, as she's in that corner, look how her scales are spread apart. She has not eaten a meal in weeks. So she is 100% full of eggs. Let's just move her out gently. Nice and gentle, don't wanna stress her out, don't wanna make her reabsorb those eggs. She's very late in the game. Nice and easy, baby, nice and easy. She's honestly a very sweet animal. And like I said, I've had her the longest out of all my venomous reptiles. She was actually the first monocled cobra I ever handled. I think when I was like 16. Oof. Yeah, very young, very young handling cobras. But uh, all of these years later, she's living with me. It's awesome, I love her. So, I'm gonna keep an eye on her. Hopefully she's gonna lay some eggs in the next, who knows, next week, maybe two weeks, hatch out some baby cobras in the future, that will be awesome. And when they do hatch out, we'll take those babies and we'll see what Venom Lab we can go bring them to. We'll donate the babies to a Venom Lab and they'll go check out Venom Research and milking venomous snakes. Monocled cobras are very important for milking because not just anti-venom, but venom research. So that'd be really cool if we can donate all of our babies to a Venom Lab. Awesome. Big Bertha, I am so proud of you. It's gonna be your first time having babies. Awesome. All right, beautiful people. I will see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, love your animals, love your family. I'll see you on the next one. Stay passionate about what you guys love. Stay beautiful. <laughs>
I want to do. Ooh, that rhyme was smooth. Ooh, ooh, ooh.